Hi, I'm Jenny Shampoo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Jenny Reeder at the Church History Library in Salt Lake City. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I love this. Oh, thanks for doing it. Mm -hmm. So Jenny is the 19th century women's history specialist for the Church History Department in Salt Lake City. She has a PhD in American history from George Mason University mm -hmm. and has published about Emma Smith and Eliza R. Snow. Um, and she's just a wonderful person. We're so grateful to you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Yeah. So today we're talking about Second Nephi um, chapters one and two. And the artwork we're looking at is by Eva Timothy. It's called Encircled in the Arms of His Love. And this is from 2020. Um, it's a what she calls a photo painting. So it's a, a photograph that she's started with. That she's taken the photograph and printed it and then um, added some painting to it also to give it this really interesting effect. Um, Jenny, first, can you just tell us a little bit about Eva Timothy and Absolutely. her process? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so Eva grew up in Bulgaria um, under communist rule. Mm -hmm. And in 1989, when um, communism fell, she was able to be a little more open and aware of her surroundings. She had really great parents mm -hmm. who uh, helped her to understand and to seek light. And that's a major theme for her, which I love, is because she sees light everywhere and she wants mm -hmm. to capture the right light. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in her, in her photographs and her works. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so speaking about this artwork, Encircled in the Arms mm -hmm. of His Love, how does this artwork interpret the scripture, or wh what is the scripture verse that this is based on? So I love this. This is one of my very favorite mm -hmm. scripture verses. It's 2 Nephi 1.15, and it's um, Lehi speaking right. about, he, right before he is to, he's about to die, and he tells his children, he gathers them all around to give them like father's blessings before he dies. Mm -hmm. And he tells them that they will be encircled in the arms of his love, of the arms of the love of Jesus. And I just think how in interesting it is that they have experienced that already. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they've left their home and left everything behind and they've built boats and started a new civilization in a yeah. new world. And um, so they've been protected and they've also been not protected. Yeah. So I feel like they know what it's like to both be encircled and to be mm -hmm. unencumbered, if you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it just really, it reminds me of a lot of other verses in the Book of Mormon, particularly, um, for example, Abinadi uh, teaches about the importance of being um, in the arms of mercy. And now he's speaking to men that are not, in fact, among the righteous. Okay. So he he's telling them that they could be encircled in the arms of mercy. And I love that whole idea of mercy being connected to the arms. Um, Jacob chapter 6 talks about how we have a merciful God who will always remember the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he stretches forth his hands. Mm -hmm. And I know his hands and arms, I think, are signs of power, which I love because it, th it means he is stretching forth his hands to protect us. Um, I also love uh, President, oh, Jacob also says, cleave unto God as he cleaved unto you. And that's exactly what I see in this painting. Yeah. They are cleaving together. I think the, the thing that comes to my mind, first of all, with this whole idea of being encircled in the arms of his love is the experience we have at the temple when we're at the veil. Mm -hmm. And we literally are encircled in the arms of his love. Now, um, that means, again, like it, it means a lot of things. President Nelson in his conference talk in April of 2023 talked about how when Jesus came to the Americas, he said, please repent and return to me so I can heal you. Mm -hmm. And so I love that idea of being encircled in those arms, but being covered and being healed and being protected. Elder Jay Jensen in October 2008 conference talks about the arms of safety and I think that's interesting too, but it's like an armor too. So I think it's it's a beautiful concept and it's one that that we all need. Yeah, I think so too. And um, as I was reviewing these scriptures, so Lehi, like you said, he's giving his sort of final farewell to his mm -hmm. children and blessing them and um, warning them that they need to stay obedient to God in order to maintain their inheritance in the land and, um, mm -hmm. and have 
salvation. Um, and I, I love the sort of power that he has when he's saying, you know, awake and shake off these chains. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and Lehi says, like, I know I'm about to die, but I'm still encircled in the arms mm-hmm. of his love. And I, it's kind of, it reminds me of um, Nephi in the very, in first chapter of Nephi, where he says he's seen all these tribulations. Nevertheless, mm-hmm. he's highly favored of the Lord, That it's, it's both, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the other <laughs> thing that, I think about when I read this is that they have already obviously before this Lehi has has had the vision of the tree of the dream of the Mm -hmm. tree of life Mm -hmm. and to me it that shows how how to be safe and how how to be safe in within the bounds the Lord has set Mm -hmm. um, by holding on to the iron rod and by um, calling for his family to be there too he wants them so badly to also be safe yeah yeah Okay, so let's look at this painting. You were talking about arms and hands as signs of strength. How mm-hmm. is Timothy using arms and hands symbolically here? You know, it's so beautiful because it's so gentle. Um, and it, it's not clenched, it's not angry, but it's so gentle and tender. Mm-hmm. And the, yet they're clasped. Both sets of these hands are clasped. And it's safe. Again, I feel like that is such an important thing for it to be safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it's interesting that we can't see Jesus's face, and I know that's yeah. the way she does a lot of her work. Right. Um, and the part of me wishes that he was a different color, just to add some variety to it. <laughs> but it, I love how you can see the veins in his hands, and they're strong. Yeah. They're powerful. They're strong, and um, strong yet tender. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you can see the strength, but but the way he's holding her so carefully and gently is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and I think it says so much. Even though you don't see his face, it's so expressive. Yeah, in in the the arms and the the embrace. Right. Um, you in that way you do see his face. Yeah. Or you see who he is and what he's doing and wh- how he mm-hmm. how he uh, is approaching this this girl or this woman. Yeah. And I think it's beautiful. There's a deep, close, tight relationship between the two right. of them. I love that it's a woman too, mm-hmm. right? Maybe a young woman. I'm I'm the young women's president in my ward, and I love working with young women. And I would love to show this to them um, as you know, just sort of a visualization mm-hmm. of of them each being encircled in the arms of His love. That's such a good idea. I'm in the young women in my ward too, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I can think of a couple in particular that I just wish I could give this to them right. so they could have it with them always. Yeah, yeah. So, Jenny, you've talked pretty openly about some difficult trials you've had in your life. Mm -hmm. You gave a beautiful um, address at the BYU Easter Conference in 2021 where you talked about some health challenges you've had, Mm -hmm. leukemia, pneumonia, shingles, bone marrow transplants, (laughs) the list goes on. You um, have such an incredible attitude, though, and and you do so much good work in in church history and especially... um, uh, women's church history, mm-hmm. right? And I just I wondered if you could just speak personally a little bit about what this painting or these, this scripture means to you, with it, all you've been through. I love that. I, it <laughs> means the world to me. Um, and I feel like I've experienced this, maybe not in a literal way as a photograph like this one, but in a very figurative way. Yeah. I have have experienced that. I was diagnosed when I was in the um, writing my dissertation I was in Northern Virginia, far away from family in Utah, and I had just been called as Relief Society president, because isn't that the way it always goes? Um, and my bishop told me, he, he was an amazing man, but he told me he wasn't going to release me. And I actually was kind of glad because I needed something that was outside of me to care about and to work towards. But I still remember how scary it was. I remember when they took me down, they did, well, when I did my first bone marrow, Um, biopsy. My bishop was in the room and they said, we have to do this bone marrow biopsy. And he said, can I, and he looked at me and I was looking at him with like these pleading eyes. I'm like, please stay with me. And he asked the doctor, can I stay in here with Jenny? And the doctor said, no. And so he went outside and shut the door and stood right there and talked to me through the door. And it was the sweetest, most tender embrace through a door. I could feel it. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when I had to go, um, get a pick line for the chemo and drawing blood and stuff. And I was scared to death. I'd never had anything like this. I'd never spent the night in the hospital. And I just 
I was, I was trembling because I was so scared and praying. And I just had this sense. It was not a vision, but it was like a vision where I could see men standing strong with um, armor protecting me and being with me. And I don't think I've ever told anyone that story. Oh, thank so you it's for really that. tender to me, but um, I'm, I'm just really grateful for that. I'm grateful for the people that in my Relief Society that, that loved me and, and took care of me mm-hmm. and um, understood that covenant that we make at baptism to comfort with those that mourn and, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort and mourn with those that mourn because they did that with me. I remember one day um, I, I had roommates, but they were at work all day and I was home all day. And so we had set up um, someone to come visit me every afternoon. Mm-hmm. And I remember on a particularly hard day, um, I was sitting on the stairs and sweet Marian Anderson came And I was crying and she just sat down and put her arm around me and cried with me. Mm. And it was exactly what I needed, but I was able to share it with her and she shared her strength with me and I could feel that and it was beautiful. I loved it. I love how that's a great example of how we can be his arms. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, absolutely. to, To physically be the arms to embrace someone and share that love. Yeah, I think that's also where I really learned how to hug someone. Yeah. I mean, you know, you do the nice, friendly, professional hugs or whatever, but then you do a hug where you are just bringing that person into you. And it's so powerful and you can feel the weight of it, Mm. but it's a beautiful, it's not necessarily like a burden weight, but it's more like we're in this together. I'm with you. I can feel you. And I love that. I do too. You know, I've had some health challenges of my own. Nothing like what you've oh, been through. No, it's but, right. Every, I mean, I feel like the older I get, the more I realize right? everyone is dealing with something. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll tell you, in the times that I felt like were the hardest, and the times when I felt the most um, despair about mm-hmm. my health situation, uh, were the times when I felt really the most love from God. And Mm -hmm. um, I did have one experience where I was praying and needing comfort. And I, I don't know how to explain it other than I felt like Uh, arms around me. It's amazing, isn't it? And you never forget that. Yeah, you never do. Never. I, you know, um, after I graduated with, I, with my PhD and moved to Salt Lake and started working for the church, I, my leukemia came back and it, Mm. um, I needed to get a bone marrow transplant. And I had someone in my, I just bought a house. I was in a new ward. I didn't know people. <clears throat> but one of my, uh, a man in my bishopric gave me a blessing. And it was so sweet. And it was like that moment. I felt like I was being seen and hugged and held. Mm-hmm. And he told me, you have a mission in life to perform. And your life will not cut short mm-hmm. until you have completed that. And I tell you what, that was a very powerful moment, and it has stood with me. So like the memory of you in that hug, I remembered that. And when my cancer came back um, a fourth time and I had to get another bone marrow transplant, I knew that I had to give everything to do everything that I could to preserve my body so I could fulfill my mission that I've been Mm. given. But I also knew that he would be with me Mm. and that I would not be alone. And sometimes when I get discouraged, or I was sick a lot this past summer, um, I just remember, I remember that. And I remember the feeling of those arms around me. And I'm so grateful for it. So one of the things that really saw me through was the fact that I was living so that I could make these women known to members of the church, to academics, to the world. Mm -hmm. And there were many times, lonely nights, long, lonely, dark nights in hospital rooms by myself where I could feel them with me. And I, I like to call them my host. They were with me. And even as like I've been out of the hospital and back at work and doing research on Emma or even on Eliza, I feel them want me to get it right. <laughs> so they're kind of guiding me. And I'm so grateful that we are in this covenant relationship, Mm -hmm. even though I've never seen them, but we understand each other and it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, I love that. I can't wait to meet them. I know. Also, I've always been worried that they won't be mad at me (laughs) for the work that I've done on them. (laughs) 
I'm sure they're incredibly grateful, as we all are, for the good work you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, of course. I love it. <laughs>